In today's world where selfies abound and where everyone has their picture taken and often by themselves, people think this is a new trend, but it is as old as time immemorial. And one of the greatest selfie takers and portrait painters is Hans Holbein. And when he painted his self-portrait, he himself was capturing Hans. In the previous episode of Capturing Hans, after painting Erasmus of Rotterdam's portrait, Hans was given letters of recommendation from Erasmus, who was considered a great thinker when it mattered to be a great thinker. And Hans headed to England to paint the portraits of some pretty important people. Here, Hans paints William Warren, the Archbishop of Canterbury. It's a pretty amazing painting, lots of detail, and Archbishop doesn't look so happy. I guess that's what happens when you're the Archbishop. He also painted one of his famous paintings, the portrait of Sir Thomas More. Sir Thomas More is an interesting character. He was Henry VIII's Lord High Chancellor of England. Then he had a fight with Henry VIII about annulling Henry VIII's marriage to Catherine of Aragon. Sir Thomas More didn't like this, nor would he take an oath of supremacy, and Henry had him beheaded. Sometimes success has its price. More should not have felt singled out, as Henry VIII also beheaded Thomas Cromwell, who was also a confidant of Henry VIII, and he was beheaded because he set up a disastrous marriage Henry had with Anne of Cleves. With two Thomases being beheaded after being painted by Hans, maybe there was a Holbein curse. After his first stint in England, because he's going to go back to England, Hans moved back to Basel, and he married and had children. And like a typical painter, he painted a portrait of them. His wife, Elsbeth, that's right, Elsbeth, his son, Philip, and his daughter, Katerina. Elsbeth looks sad, probably because her husband was an artist and Hans would eventually be unfaithful to her. It appears Hans missed England, so he went back to England and painted a number of other great artworks. Here's a portrait of an English lady. Now, maybe Hans was painting so many people he didn't bother to actually put the name of the person in the various portraits he painted, but we don't know who this person is. We know she's probably a member of the English court. I mean, as a painting goes, she's a, she seems to be a nice lady. Here's a portrait of a Hanseatic merchant. We don't know who this man is either, though we suspect that the portrait was painted when he was 33, which was a sort of a milestone for people back then, because 33 was the age that Jesus was thought to have been crucified. Thought or believed, it's still a good painting. Here's a portrait of Anne Boleyn. Oh, what a tragedy. This was Henry's second wife, and she did not give him a male heir. So Henry, obviously, had her beheaded. Why? Because he was the king. And that's what a king could do back then. Poor Anne. But while Anne Boleyn died, Hans gained great fame as an artist. But alas, all he could do was create. It was up to the critics and the pundits of future generations to interpret his work and his legacy. Join us in our next episode as the Morgan Library does its best in capturing Hans. <laughs>